I blew up Twitter the other day by doing a post talking about the worst Chris Chibnall lines, and I thought, just to be fair and balanced, TM, trademark, that I would decide to do a follow-up post talking about the worst Moffat lines. I can do a Chibnall one later on, down that, do a Chibnall segment on this uh, live stream in the near future, but I figured, you know what, let's talk about, in my opinion, the worst Stephen Moffat lines of his tenure of the show. Uh, I've done a, I'm going to be going from this, uh, this tweet thread here. So, let's talk about this. For, this is from Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. The impossible girl Clara has just left and the 11th Doctor is uh, trying to pontificate about who she is. And he settles on a mystery wrapped in an enigma squeezed into a skirt. That's just a little bit too tight. Um, oh dear, that's... Okay, it's very strange, the weird uh, sexualization of Clara in uh, in series 7 from the 11th Doctor. Considering that at the end of series 6... This doctor got married, so I don't really know why uh, they went for this uh, this frame of reference here. But also in um, I think it's journey in the uh, journey to the center of the TARDIS as well. When um oh, oh this is nightmare in silver. Sorry, yeah. So this is nightmare in silver. In the prior episode, in a prior episode, journey to the center of the TARDIS, I the eleventh doctor just walks past Clara and like spanks her as well, or like hits her bum. It's what on earth? And then in the crimson horror. He just snogs Jenny, like, unprovoked. Like, this is an unsolicited snog that she clearly does not engage. It, it is tantamount to, like, sexual assault. And it's played for laughs. And it's just not very good. Jackson Cock, written by Game and Not Moffat. I am sure that these impossible girl interludes, like, at the beginning and end of episodes were written by Moffat. Like, and this has Moffat horniness written all over it. Like, if you've watched any of his other stuff, this horniness is, like, on display in so much of uh, of Moffat's other work. Lately, who he spanks her when. Journey to the center of the TARDIS. One second, I'll find the clip. Watch. Space of one. It's, you, there's even a sound effect. I'll get rid of my webcam. One second. Let's watch that again. Instant replay. We've had two days crammed into the space of one. He spanks a bum. Like, that might not have been written into the script, to be fair. That might have been an onset improvisation. But my goodness, why are we... Why is this happening? Like, I'm not even w wanting to do a whole think of the children thing. I'm thinking more, Eleventh Doctor, what is wrong with you? And this weird sexualization and... It's so out of character for the Eleventh Doctor. And noticing, oh, she's an enigma in a skirt that's a little bit too tight. It's cringe. It is giga cringe. Tony Parker Clara has no reaction because she's just used to this by now. I bet this is like the 30th time this has happened, like this week. And she's like, yeah, whatever. It's just what he does. Like, yeah. He was looking for a big red button. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the first place he looks for it, of course. So, yeah. That's probably the worst moment of it, though, in terms of just a line. Squeezed into a skirt. That's a little bit too tight. Next line. Don't cremate me. Don't cremate me. People responded to this on Twitter saying, oh, he's going on about dark water, death in heaven again. And, yeah, it, it didn't suddenly become good or change. Now, I've done a whole, like, part of my, uh, my Cyber Semba video, Dark Water, Death in Heaven, talking about this, so my thoughts on this are already quite well known already. But, um, Alex Roberts, he slaps her, her ass in time of the Doctor 2, crying out loud. But yeah, so, yeah, don't cremate me. Um, I talked about this in my Dark Water review, go check that out properly. However, the implications of this are absolutely mad, considering that, um, uh, Missy, for all intents and purposes, creates the afterlife, and because of what happened through the rest of series eight, um, every human being, whether they were on earth or not at the time of their death, throughout all of human history, uh, go to this afterlife that Missy has created, and if they were created, they feel the pain of that cremation. Uh, and if you say, no, it turns out this is actually a hoax, this was contradicted by the episode itself. Danny Pink feels the cold because he's in a morgue. Uh, like the, Everything in the episode supports the idea of this being a genuine afterlife that Missy has created, even though initially the Twelfth Doctor does write it off as, as fakery. Although in Death in Heaven, he actually says the afterlife is real and it's emptying. Like I said, it's contradicted episode to episode, but it does settle on it being an afterlife that's real. And then worst part is, is that the BBC, when they got complaints about this scene, 
either lied about the episode's content or did not know what they were broadcasting. Neither of them are good scenarios because they said, yeah, it turns out this is fake. The Everything in this episode supports the idea that this is a very real afterlife and this don't cremate me line is not a hoax, but it is something that genuinely is a feature of this afterlife. The girl comment, I still think it's only the people of London at the time. Well, that's why so many guests in your life. No, because uh, Gretchen dies inside of a Dalek in space and she gets picked up by Missy as well. The half-faced man in 18th century London gets picked up as well. Um, who else um, does Missy see? Um, but either way, like because of Gretchen being in a Dalek in the far future millions of miles away also gets picked up by missy the implication being that this is all of humanity across all of recorded history or to quote the 12th doctor how long has the human race had a concept of an afterlife that's how long this goes on for including but not limited to the doctor's companions which also includes characters like uh adric like sarah jane like the brigadier and the latter two those actors had recently passed away it's mad the Puzzle Boy, so not much has changed in 2014 regarding controversial BBC things. Now, Michael Grade is a massive Tory, so he is a bad person. But he made a very good point in his interview on the Season 22 box set where he says that... Um Oh, Tony Parker, the boy Danny killed in the Middle East. Yeah, that kid really did die, and then he goes into the afterlife. Like, yeah, this isn't just London. Like, this is not a hoax. That kid did die, and then he goes into the afterlife, and then is brought back at the end. It's emphatically not a hoax. And this is so dark and twisted and depraved for the sake of itself because this is never brought up again as a plot capacity. Like, there's no reason for this at all in the story. It's like edgelord dramatization that serves nothing for the sake of itself just to be depraved for the sake of depravity. But for Michael Grade, thank you for keeping me back on track, stay on target. He says that uh, the BBC would rather like dig their heels than ever be seen to be wrong and he's absolutely right 100 percent right you saw this with the whole um uh, bbc news trans article even though like basically everything about that article is bad and poorly sourced and poorly put together through every single capacity imaginable they still had to dig their heels and defend it because they would rather do that than be seen to be wrong and michael grade is right it is a symbol of strength and integrity to admit when you were wrong and to to fix those mistakes this was just um moffat edginess for the sake of it that serves no purpose only to make the doctor who universe a worst place by its existence um so next up she remembers me same old amy uh this is one of many examples of moffat uh using women slapping men as just the joke in and of itself because this is all oh, amy do you remember me slap across the face she remembers me same old amy there is also the point of no return moment for me in Asylum of the Daleks when Amy just slaps Rory and it's not played for comedy or humor. And it's like, oh God, yeah, so is Amy like just a physically abusive wife? But it's okay because apparently it's okay when uh, women hit men. <laughs> um, yeah, really progressive of you, Stephen Moffat. Now, I'm not going to claim that like Stephen Moffat is like a terrible person, but that is absolutely 100% a blind spot in his writing. It happens all the time as well with Clara, just like slapping dudes. And it's like, ha, it's funny no it's not so so but i don't remember the context of this it's asylum of the daleks all of the context is bad it's a very very bad episode so this is also just a really really bad moment in it with the 11th doctor just laughing it off as well so yeah there's a million and one things wrong in asylum of the daleks but this was just what what this is just what leapt out to me for the purposes of this next up um this um from the, uh, the witch is familiar um, and I said in the tweet, this is worse than anything implied or stated in the Timeless Children. You are different from me, exterminate, exterminate. So, for those of you who don't remember, in The Witch is Familiar, the opener of season 9, it is heavily implied that the Dalek mutants themselves in the casing do not actually do the hating or the killing, it is actually the Dalek tanks that do it. Because, as Missy explains in the episode, you know, Cybermen remove emotion, but Daleks channel it through a gun. That's how they reload. That's why they keep on yelling exterminate. 
And Clara says, my name is Clara. Says, I am Dalek. Like, I love you. Exterminate. You are different from me. Exterminate. Exterminate. This is, like, the Timeless Children, even if you hate it, it does pretty well slot into the Doctor's characterization. It doesn't fundamentally change who they are as a character, other than some Wikipedia entries. This is, like, just a fundamental misunderstanding of the Daleks themselves. To quote the fourth Doctor in Genesis of the Daleks, when Davros says, like, you know, the machine, the, um, like, the machines are ready to go the fourth doctor says it's not the machines it's the minds of the creatures inside them minds that you created they are totally evil and it was very frustrating on twitter when people are saying that you know that's not what is being implied in this story here and it's just clear that people haven't watched the witches familiar in a while which is absolutely fine gm97 i'm defending this the mutants are bad the suits reinforce the rhetoric the suit shouldn't have to reinforce the rhetoric though they shouldn't have to like it, genuinely it was absolutely mad being on twitter for this discussion because it was unironically the patrick star wallet meme it was like okay if you have a nazi right a nazi soldier and they're next to a tank who is the real nazi it's the nazi if the nazi goes inside of the tank is it the tank killing or is it the nazis it's the nazis okay so who is the nazi in the dalek tank then oh actually the tanks are there to reinforce like it is unironically the Patrick Star wallet meme, where you'll go to the very end point, but you won't go to the actual conclusion. It's maddening. The discussion was maddening. So yeah, I don't. I got the sense that the Stephen Moffat did not like writing for the Daleks. This feels like a change for the sake of itself. And sometimes there are some fun, like offhand comments that Moffat could do, like River Song saying, "No, the TARDIS doesn't actually make that noise. You just leave the brakes on." that's like a funny one-off thing okay that can sort of like been hand waved away this is like just a fund a fundamental misunderstanding of the daleks and their allegory as like fascism it's absolutely mad Russell suggestion it can say okay that's a bit weird but not my name is clara it is mad Christopher John and Clara is a good person inside of the tank and the tank can't function or speak right because it isn't made for that type of conscience because the moon is still the evil being not the... That's not what happens in the episode, though. Clara even, like, inadvertently ends up firing the weapon in this scene. So people were even saying, like, oh, actually, no, Missy was lying about this scene and was just messing with Clara. Even though the conflict at the end of the episode, will the Doctor destroy the Dalek in front of him even though Clara's inside of it, hinges fundamentally on Missy not lying about what she's talking about in that scene it is like if i were to be reaching that far and that level of charitability for a, a chris chibnall moment you would say that i was reaching and you'd be a hundred percent right in that assessment mario basil fun i get clips from ian and the daleks and it will contradict this oh yeah basically everything about the daleks in the past contradicts this in a resurrection of the daleks the dalek mutant is still a uh, evil killer when it's outside of the case like you don't need the daleks to be translating and channeling the hate the mutant itself is the allegory that it just uses the tank as an extension of it it doesn't like it's madness Finn, Chibnall is boring, bad, Moffat is infuriating, bad. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Lily, who I'll um, give an example of time stop via DMs if you like. Go for it. I'll go through it after I've gone through mine and then we can we can work it through. When people were trying to defend this moment and like try and um, I have some like hand waving justifications or examples, it was directly contradicted by later on in the episode because that's the that's what the charitability uh, it, that's what it needs. Like it, it needs to ignore all of the context surrounding the clip. And also, this is one I had as well, from Twice Upon a Time, when uh, Bill is talking about the testimony glass uh, robot on the screen, and the first Doctor responds, well, aren't all ladies made of glass, in a way? And then starts laughing in patriarchy with Mark Gatiss' character here. Now, I'm not here to say that the first Doctor was a beacon of progressivism, and that he didn't have a few cringe-worthy sexist moments during his tenure. But the twice upon a time portrayal of the first Doctor is akin to character assassination. He said nothing even a tenth this bad when it comes to gender across his entire three and a half season run back in the 1960s. Nothing even remotely close. The closest that Moffat gets to this cringeworthy 
moment like and, and it actually works is when he's directly quoting the jolly good smacked bottom moment that's genuinely funny but it just seems like he 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 just took like a cliff notes version of the first doctor and it's a shame because david bradley is really good in this role but he's given lines which do not remotely reflect the first doctor as a character and let's not forget as well that this isn't just any version of the first doctor this is the first doctor at the end of the tenth planet where he's grown and changed and matured and he's like lightened his demeanor after you know having the edges sanded off by ian and barbara and susan and vicky and dodo and steven like he's had these great experiences and now he's become a better person because of it so now you're saying that moments before his regeneration he's like making these sexist comments and saying that yeah you know bill you should be cleaning up the tardis it's really at the place it's 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 so bad johnny says smacking bottoms is funny in terms of accurately representing the first doctor yeah to an extent but yeah this is this is character assassination this is like a complete misrepresentation of the first doctor and like i said the first doctor is not like a beacon of progressivism there is that line in the dalek's master plan when he says oh th this place is a madhouse it's all full of arabs no not good it, it was a different time but when it comes to gender the 10th planet first doctor is not even remotely like this and this was so disappointing to see and it kind of imagine being a revived series doctor who fan and this is your first exposure to the first doctor what a depressingly distressing way to be introduced to this incarnation people say oh chibnall ruined the first doctor by not making him the first doctor anymore even though he emphatically is but this was even worse this and the dalek moment is worse than anything that chibnall has done in terms of retconning or changing the past of the show a thousandfold like even like um the time uh, even the um the revelation at the end of series nine that the doctor didn't leave gallifrey because he wanted to have fun or wanted to be free of them but because he was scared of the hybrid and then it turns out he doesn't even know what the hybrid is it doesn't no it doesn't pan out but yeah Flipsy, the OG jolly good smack bottom line was that his granddaughter, not a random woman. Like, I'm not 100% defending it, but in the context of this is meant to be, like, a cringeworthy thing that the first Doctor has actually said in the past, it's the, it's the happy medium, I guess. But this stuff here is emphatically worse than anything the first doctor said when it comes to gender gm97 this was my first experience with the first doctor and i assumed heartless incarnation was like this glad to find out it wasn't as bad when i finally watched the classic series yeah i'm i'm very sorry that your first exposure to the first doctor was this oh my dear but yeah it like i said the the first doctor undergoes a massive change over the course of the series if this was like pre an unearthly child first doctor maybe at a push but not a first doctor who's literally minutes away from regenerating into patrick troughton anyway does anybody have uh, any other examples of moffat lines anything else i know that lily has sent some in discord let's take a look at what lily's got oh dear space and time oh god i remember this okay do i really look like that yeah yeah you do oh dear oh dear oh dear um and also the idea that the 11th doctor in series five has the um the tardis with the glass floor so rory is able to peek when she's walking around in a skirt oh dear oh dear right see for being so socially awkward 11 certainly picks up on a lot of sexual comments yeah it's i matt smith also doesn't really pull it off i with his incarnation being incredibly like asexual vibes i i don't think he pulls it off i really don't i'm very sorry because it was my skirt and my husband and your glass floor oh dear oh yep yeah uh, just moffat just can you please stop being horny for like 30 seconds and remember that you're making a family program please Finn, the women are bad drivers thing was dated with Jerry Anderson did it in the 1960s. Oh, God, yeah. There's an episode of Thunderbirds where, unironically, a woman is such a bad driver that she crashes into an underground car park of, like, a brand new skyscraper, causes a fire, and brings the whole building down. Like, that's the inciting incident of a Thunderbirds episode. 
I forgot about that. Yeah, she's such a bad driver, she brings down a skyscraper. And it's played, like, completely seriously. Like, slow down, you're gonna crash. Because it's either a driving instructor or just somebody in the car with her. Tony Parker, wasn't that for children's charity? I can't remember. Space, time, Doctor Who. Two mini episodes. Tr uh, comic relief. Yeah, it was comic relief. And when Moffat was like, oh, I can write comedy. And it, it's just sexy jokes. There's a comment that she got her driving license due to the instructor liking her skirt. Oh, God. Oh, right. As somebody who I, the le who learned to drive in Grimsby, and I didn't know a single woman uh, who uh, did their driving test in Grimsby who wasn't sexually assaulted by the test instructors there. Oh, my God, this is, like, so tone deaf. There's an unexpected house. Oh, he's jealous because I passed my test first time. You cheated. You wore a skirt. I didn't wear a skirt. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. And I am sounding like the Chuckle Brothers, I apologise. <laughs> Every moment of space and time gets worse as it goes along. Okay, well, what's this from um, A Good Man Goes to War? You're Lorna Bucket, aren't you? Yeah? Hello, I'm the thin one. This is my husband. He's the fat one. Don't you have names? We're the thin, fat, gay, married Anglican Marines. Why would we need names as well? Oh, my goodness. That was a thing. Oh, you want to know one terrible line from uh, the from Moffat era that I forgot to mention? Um, what is it? It's from Deep Breath. Right. The, I think possibly one of the worst Moffat lines in recorded human history comes from Deep Breath when Clara is uh, pining over the 11th Doctor, even though the two never had any sort of convincing romantic chemistry. So I don't really know why they took that angle there. But Clara is having a conversation with Vastra. Now, I've not seen the episode for a while, so I can't like quite quote it verbatim, but Vastra uses, uh, in their conversation, she's wearing a veil to sort of, um, as, a, as an allegory for Clara being selfish and not, like, only looking, like, skin deep. I wear a veil to keep my view, what many are pleased to call my disfigurement. I do not wear it as a courtesy to such people, but as a judgment on the quality of their hearts. Are you judging me? The doctor regenerated in your presence. The old man disappeared. The veil lifted. He trusted you. Are you judging him? And then, yeah, so... It's it's meant to be a metaphor for Clara uh, not being able to see the like, the inner beauty or the true face of the Doctor, being judgmental, etc., etc. And she's wearing a veil. You can tell she's wearing a veil. It's here. You know, she's wearing it. And then later on... Where is it? And I like even the subtitles just show how bloody horny Stephen Moffat is. Oh, you big sexy woman. He's talking to a dinosaur. A, a, like a cutaway later, Clara and Vastra are still in this conversation, and Clara asks, "When did you stop wearing your veil? When you stopped seeing it?" No, she took the veil off. She didn't stop seeing. She took the veil off. It was an actual tangible piece of costume that she was wearing in the last scene, and now no longer is. Oh my god, I'm going to have a hernia. So, subtextually, it doesn't make sense for the character, especially considering that Clara, only a few episodes prior, saw the Doctor's timelines and all of his incarnations and knew that he was the 11th Doctor and the War Doctor and has been in a multi-Doctor story multiple times at this point and is now all of a sudden not equipped to have a new incarnation of the Doctor. Oh, it hurts my brain. So, for one, Will, she's not being literal. It worked... It it doesn't work either literally or metaphorically. It is, it's like a cake. It is multiple, f like, layers of failure. Darius, why did the Daleks have a parliament? It looks good on a poster. <laughs> 